It tells us what quantity demanded is, and it tells us what quantity supplied is. And the question says, what is total surplus? So we're looking for producer surplus plus consumer surplus. Well, let's take a look at this graph and what these two curves look like. We have demand and we have supply. We know we want to produce at Q star and we want to charge P star. That's where demand equals supply. So we know that consumer surplus is all the area below the demand curve above the price. So we know that, that blue triangle is consumer surplus and think about this, that if we're trying to produce this unit right here say, well it only cost us this much to buy and we value it all the way up there. So that's true all the way until Q star. All those units are valued higher than it cost the person to buy it, the consumer to buy it, which is the price. So that's how we think about this. Demand represents value, supply represents cost. So this red triangle is producer surplus. And again, if we look at that same unit, it only cost us this much to make, but we sold it for that much. So again, everything below the price and above the supply curve is producer surplus. And we see that we don't produce past Q star because if we produce past Q star, let's say this unit, well then the it cost way up here and the, the, we actually get only price for it. And likewise, the value is way down here and we, and we have to pay more than it. So you wanna rem remember that demand is value and supply is cost. So that'll help you always in drawing your producer and consumer surplus. So we need to solve for the area of these two triangles. Well, we need these four yellow points in order to do that. Well, let's take this first point. This point is where quantity demanded is equal to zero. So Q is equal to zero and we can solve for P because that is the intersect on the price axis. So we know that price isn't equal to zero. It's definitely above zero. It hits way up there, but we do see that quantity is zero at that point. We're not going over it all on quantity. So we charge, we uh, solve for P to be equal to 20 when Q, when quantity demanded equals zero. Well, this next point, that's where quantity supplied equals zero. So we're gonna do the same process and we solve for P to be equal to $1 when quantity supplied is equal to zero. Well, this point, P star, is where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So we can plug that in and solve for P. And in this case, we solve for price to be equal to 8.31 when we set quantity supplied equal to quantity demanded. Now, when you're doing these problems, do not round that price. Now, I've rounded that price because I couldn't fit the whole number on there. It would have just be, it would be ugly. So when you're solving these, do not round. It, you'll miss the problem. Hold it out to at least seven or eight digits. But now that once you have that in your calculator, whatever price equals, you can plug it into either supp quantity supplied or quantity demanded to find Q star. So you can plug it into either function to find Q star, and I'm gonna choose to plug it into my demand function in this case, and I find that Q, Q star is equal to 292.25. So now I have all three of my, or all four of my points rather, and now I can solve for my producer surplus and my consumer surplus. Well, consumer surplus is one half base times height, where the base is 292.25, and the height is the difference between 20 and 8.31. And when I solve that, I see consumer surplus is 1,708.2. Producer surplus is one half base times height. The base is the same, 292.25, and the height is the difference between 8.31 and $1. So when I solve that, I get 1,068.17. So total surplus is just the addition of those two things. In this case, $2,776.37.